Welcome back to Ignition. I'm your host, Ian King. Now, if you live in the Philippines like I do, then you probably own one of these. It's a Toyota Fortuner diesel. Now, my Fortuner here has the big brake kit already from Runstop, but because I forgot to check everything and maintain the brakes, it's now grinding metal to metal. So today, we're actually gonna show you how to fix and change all the brakes and pads in your car. Make sure when you guys decide, decide to change your brakes at home that your car is securely jacked on jack stands and a level floor. And naturally, make sure the jack stands you have are rated to carry the car. Obviously, an SUV is heavier than a car, so you'd wanna get a three-ton jack all in all four corners. So basically what I'm doing now is I'm removing the caliper from the carrier to get to the brake pads. So we're just going to wedge. Oh wow. Oh no. So over here we actually have a broken seal which is brittle already. Okay, note. So you want to put the caliper in the back first and get access to the brake pads. So your first sign to know if your pads are worn out is this little metal tab here. What this thing does is it actually touches the disc brake and it makes this noise. The next visual cue for us is if you actually run your finger on the rotor disc and you feel notches and grooves could be a possibility that you have uneven brake wear and that you need to service your pads. After removing one side, we're going to work on the other side. Now this whole process uh, could take you up to three hours. You actually can do it in your, in your house, in your garage. Um, I do have a certified mechanic with me, so it makes the job a lot easier. So the first thing you'd actually want to do is press the piston of the brake back in. Naturally, the piston's out this much because the pads are so worn that it's, it's just stuck out all the way. So we have a little makeshift brake pusher here. And you know what? We're gonna wedge an old brake pad so it's much faster. So we just take any old brake pad, put it in there, and then wedge that in and start pushing that piston back in. Now, as I said, this one's pretty far out, so we're going to be working on this quite a bit. Okay, it's done. Now, because this is the brake upgrade kit from Runstop, we actually replaced the drum brake of the Fortuner with a twin caliper brake kit. I think the kits are made in Thailand, and after I installed it, I'd say it gave me maybe an 80% break increase over stock. So it's really worth it for me. Now, I've removed the calipers and I'm going to replace the rotor disc. Now obviously your first, first try is to yank it off. And over the years, that's binded on. So what we're going to do is actually put two 12 bolts right here in the small holes. So we're going to, we're going to torque that in evenly. So what it does, it's, it's going to push on the inside and hopefully release a rotor. And at the same time, we're going to be hammering certain points to allow for uh, vibration to release it. So I'm going to take a little socket wrench and evenly distribute. Yep. And we have some movement. And in between, a little tap with the hammer. So try to loosen it up and then torque again. And there you go. Off with the brakes. So obviously, you just want to check if your brake shoe is still nice and thick. This is where the handbrake actually activates and it locks on the inner side of your brake and ours is still nice and thick so that's good so as i said these are the performance upgrades for the fortuner this is a 
cross-ventilated slotted rotor. And I think the rear disc size is uh, 330 mm, and the front ones are 350. And it slides right in. So what we're doing now is replacing the old worn-out brake pads with these new ones from RunStop. And we're making sure that the sensors clip in here to the slots. And after that, slide it on the rotor, align it with the mounting points, get your caliper back, and make sure it slides snug. There you go. Just bolt everything back on. So we're just gonna hand tighten all the bolts in. Just to make sure that everything will line up. After all that, you wanna test your brakes in the shop before actually getting to the road. Now make sure you have good pedal feel. So if it feels mushy and it feels like you have a deep brake, then you better check your work again. Now, when you're bedding in your new brakes and pads, make sure that you bed them nice and evenly. I like to do the stop tech method, which is running from 120 to 40, doing deep, even braking. And I do this about eight to 12 times and then let the rotors cool while running before slowing down. For me, this helps make sure that the pads and the rotors bed evenly. I hope you enjoyed that short segment and now I'm gonna go take it for a test drive.